Here's the inside of the power supply I'll be using with the uh, 833. I was going to build a separate supply, but then that just got crazy. Why would I do that? This is a, a pretty fancy little transformer here with taps at 2,000, 2,500, and 3,000. I've got them run over the switches right here that switch them into the rectifier set. Now, these, I wish I could make these just for the beauty of it, 833s. Not 833s, I'm sorry, 866s. But uh, adding in the filament transformers is just too much of a chore. I'd have to actually disassemble all this again and rebuild it. And that's just actually more than I want to do. There's a capacitor bank back there. There's actually two capacitor banks. There's one underneath it too. It's kind of hard to see. So if I want to make it a um, capacitor input, put, I can. I run it pretty much all the time as a choke input. This is a big uh, choke over here. I think it's 8 Henry's, 550 milliamps, and it's uh, got a 6,000 volt rating. Yeah, here's the uh, here's the wire from the uh, second set of capacitors. Yes, this thing is off and unplugged and discharged, or it would probably already killed me. What I did with these switches is kind of interesting. You might find it interesting, because I ran the... Uh, the wires from here over to it so I can select the voltage. Let's see if I can turn this beast around so you can see it over here. Yeah, you can see that okay. So I can switch 2000. I have to switch them both at the same time. Two and two, or I can, they have to, and that's 2500 and that's 3000. So that's the way I made that variable. I could make it variable in one other possible way and that would be if I put in another switch possibly uh, right here and I could either ground the center tap or ground the anodes of uh, these two right here which are grounded right now see how they're strapped together and then this wire right here goes off the ground that forms the leg of the bridge but if I lifted this from the ground and tied that to the ground then I'd have a, a center tap full wave but with this one off and this one grounded, then I've got a uh, full wave bridge. Anyway, that's the power supply. Uses a couple of uh, 20 amp house fuses. I fuse both sides. Got the holding relay circuit right over there. So that I have to uh, have a start switch to, to power it up. But that's the way I like it. I've, I've made a video of, of holding relay circuits before. They're actually a good idea in my opinion. So that's the power supply I'll be using for just about everything from now on. That's my universal high voltage power supply. Okay, here it is from the front. I've got a screen on the back, and of course I'll have the amplifier here in the front. And I'll show you, I've got it on the uh, 2000 volt taps right now. And I'll uh, power it up. Of course there's no filament, that would go over here. To power up, you know, the filaments or whatever up to this amplifier chassis up here. The high voltage enable allows me to turn the power on or off, and with that, people can't turn it on accidentally. Once you put the key in there, now it's no load, so the voltage is going to be rather high. Under a load, it'll be actually about 2,000, 2,500, or 3,000, but under no load, it comes up to. 2800 or so. Turn it off. Drains down slowly just through those those are one mega ohm resistors across the capacitors. It drains down pretty slow. It's still down at 2500. We switch it over here. Of course, you have to switch these with power off. Then we get as much as 3600, 3700. And uh, in, in the highest position, no load. Yeah, it's getting pretty dangerous, isn't it? It's running up to 4,400, 4,500 volts, no load. That's the maximum rating of my capacitors. That's a lot of voltage. I'm pretty. I, that makes me nervous. 4,000 volts is pretty scary stuff. Anyway, that's that. Let's keep moving. Okay, 
with that power supply out of the way. The 833 amp is coming along. Place is quite a disaster, but that's okay. Here's the driver transform I'm going to use. Right there. Uh, push-pull plates to push-pull grids, except I'll use half of it. I'll probably use all of it. We'll see. I, I, one of the things I thought about doing, darn, I don't have them out right now. Let's just play, th these are actually filament transformers. Let's play like these are audio transformers. What I thought about doing is, uh, say, hook the, the primary over here to the, uh, to this, uh, uh, this, this is actually going to be a power fly. This is just a holding place right here but assume that this is the the driver tube in the 833 amp down here here's what it is what I've got right now aren't those cute little uh, tags right there 6SL7 that's what it's going to be and I got 6V6 right here and I've already got it mounted but I don't know if I'm going to go with this I may test it with this what this is is a standard 6V6 push-pull transformer so I've got it hooked across the um, 6V6, and then underneath it i got another one just like it. See, this is the primary hooked to the plate of the tube, and here's the secondary, 4 ohm. i got it hooked to the 4 ohm stuff underneath, and then I'm going to turn it back around and drive the grid of this tube. I've done this kind of stuff successfully for years, so I think it'll work. But I found in my stash this guy, so now I'm going to change it to that. So that's how this one comes in. Uh, so forget that other example. This is going to be a, uh, the low voltage and bias supply right here. I'll probably build it tonight. There's just not enough room on the, on the big chassis where the 833 plugs in. So that's my latest update on the 833 amp. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, I have made uh, some recordings and played around with it a little bit. It sounds really good. It's pretty amazing. It does have the harmonic profile of a triangular wave. Go figure. But uh, somehow I guess uh, we like that artifact. I'm not sure why. There you go. Still moving on.